Welcome back to Lab Cyber. and unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know at this point that Russia has invaded Ukraine and first of all, my thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people. Unfortunately, during war, it's usually innocent people that suffer the most and I can only hope and pray that the war ends quickly and doesn't escalate any further, but maybe that's just me being overly optimistic. But anyways, as a result of Russia's invasion, the West has been debating as the best way to respond to Vladimir Putin. Of course, economic sanctions have been proposed, but there are a lot of people who believe that economic sanctions aren't enough to deter uh, Putin and Russia. As a result, alternative methods of responding have been proposed, and one of them is through the use of cyber warfare. And that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to give you my full breakdown of what cyber warfare is the types of cyber warfare, and also give you very specific examples of cyber warfare attacks that have occurred in the past. Now, let me present to you my presentation in here on cyber warfare. So the very first main question here would be, what exactly is cyber warfare? Well, this is often described as cyber attacks against a country's infrastructure, the keyword here being country. Regular cyber attacks are against individuals, businesses, companies, that's regular cyber attacks, but when it's against a country's infrastructure, that's when it becomes cyber warfare. Now, infrastructure could mean anything from power grids, communication lines, transportation, and even the internet. So when I say infrastructure, I'm referring to any one of these uh, things. Now, the thing is, there is still a lot of debate among experts as to what exactly is cyber warfare. Think of it this way, right? Imagine as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, let's say there is a group of hacktivists based in the United States. They're not sponsored by the American government. They have no ties to the Joe Biden administration. But because they are hacktivists and they feel Russia's invasion of Ukraine is unjust, they decide to launch cyber attacks against Russia's uh, power infrastructure. Would you call that cyber warfare? You could because it's against a country's infrastructure. But you could also argue that it's not exactly cyber warfare because the people committing the uh, cyber attacks aren't sponsored by a government. The American government isn't sponsoring these guys. So you could argue that it's not exactly cyber warfare. Also, the, some experts believe that unless people actually die as a result of the cyber attack, then it's not cyber warfare. So there's still a lot, a lot of gray as to what exactly constitutes cyber warfare or what does not constitute cyber warfare. However, one thing that's generally agreed upon is that if it's a country launching cyber attacks against another country's infrastructure, then that's uh, usually cyber warfare. Now, a cyber attack can be determined to be an act of war. And I brought this up because uh, earlier today, I was watching on, on Fox News. I watch a lot of news channels, by the way, not just Fox News. But on Fox News, there was this um, you know, political commentator asking why the Joe Biden administration hasn't launched uh, cyber attacks against Russia. Here's the thing. Cyber attacks can be very, very disruptive. And depending on what's been attacked, they could also be deadly. So when you launch cyber attacks against a country's infrastructure, that country could call that an act of war. And as a result, the country might retaliate. So if America was to launch cyber attacks against Russia today, I can almost guarantee that Russia would respond. And what would America now do to Russia's response? Will they now respond with something else? That's usually how things escalate. And I think the, the one thing we all need to avoid at this point is escalation. So... I'm just bringing this up because uh, I want people to be a bit more level-headed when thinking about how best to, you know, respond in, in, in situations like this. You know, you just don't launch cyber attacks against uh, a country and not expect any sort of uh, response. All right, there is a particular manual called the Tallinn Manual that tries to explain when cyber attacks violate international law and how countries may respond to such violations. However, whether or not governments would use this manual remains to be seen no one really really knows so it does exist but how respected it is no one can really say but if you'd like to learn more about the talent manual you can simply uh, look it up if you're interested now let's talk about the different types of cyber warfare attacks you've got espionage sabotage DOS denial of service attacks 
electrical power grid attacks, propaganda, economic disruption, and of course, surprise attacks. Let's take a look at them one by one. The first one here being espionage. Of course, the classic espionage attack where you steal secrets with the use of botnets, spear phishing, and even insider attacks. I'm going to give you a very, very specific example. And I don't know if you have ever heard of these uh, enemies of Qatar attack back in 2018. There used to be this Republican, I believe it was a fundraiser, uh, Elliot Brady. Now, he sued the Qatari government, accusing them of stealing and leaking his emails in an attempt to discredit him. I don't remember the full story, but I believe that the Qatari government were trying to be in good terms with the American government, and they saw this guy, Elliot Brady, as some sort of a stumbling block. Like he had, I don't remember the full details, but the Qatari government felt like, yeah, this guy is in our way, we need to get him out of our way, we need to discredit him, so... Apparently, they gained access to his emails and they leaked it out all in an attempt to uh, discredit him. So that would be an example of uh, an espionage attack because you have a government, a Qatari government, conducting an attack against a, uh, a Republican in the American uh, government. All right, sabotage, of course, stealing or destroying data or compromising network services that can cause serious disruption. One of the very best examples of this would be the Stuxnet attack against Iran back in 2010. And I believe that this was the very first time we actually had a cyber weapon uh, being deployed. Just to give you some uh, insight, America and Israel, although America and Israel have never officially accepted responsibility, but it is widely believed that it was both America and Israel that jointly built the Stuxnet cyber weapon and they launched it against Iran's uh, nuclear centrifuges. If you've never heard of this story before, uh, please do look it up. It's very, very, very interesting, actually. And uh, the Stuxnet uh, malware was very, very powerful and it really affected uh, Iran's uh, centrifuge, centrifuges and uh, prevented them from being able to uh, build uh, nuclear weapons, I believe. So you can look that up as well. Now, you've got DOS, the of service attacks, against news and government websites. The best example of this would be the Russia cyber attacks against Estonia of, uh, of 2007, where you had Russian hackers targeting Estonian websites, including those of the parliament, banks, and even uh, newspapers. Now, if you don't know the story behind this, there used to be this statue of a soldier, a Russian soldier that did something fantastic during the Second World War. I don't remember the full story, but the Estonian government wanted to move the statue away from, I believe, the capital to somewhere else. And you had these Russian hackers in Russia who felt like, hey, now you're disrespecting this great Russian soldier. So now we're going to launch attacks, uh, cyber attacks against you. And they were actually very, very successful. They were able to shut down uh, Estonian websites, including those of the government, the parliament, and even took out websites of banks and uh, newspapers. For a very long time, the people in Estonia couldn't even have access to the news because all the websites were being shut down. So that's an example of a DOS uh, cyber warfare attack. Next, we've got electrical power grid. Of course, this would be attacking power grids to disable critical systems and disrupt infrastructure. We've got propaganda. Yes, this one is extremely important. Attempts to control the thoughts of people and make them lose trust in the government or side with their enemies. One of the best examples I can give of this would be the uh, North Korea cyber attacks against Sony Pictures uh, back in 2014. Now, if you remember uh, this, there was this movie that was released called The Interview. And it was about two American uh, talk show hosts or something like that. I think, I think Seth, it wasn't Seth, Mac, it wasn't Seth, Mac, Seth MacFarlane. I don't remember the, 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 the two actors. I'm not, I'm not really fans of them anyways, but... The whole idea was that they were hired by the CIA to go into North Korea and take out uh, Kim Jong Un, the the you know the leader of, of North Korea. So the North Korean government saw that as an insult, and they decided to retaliate against Sony. And it was a very successful attack. Uh, they were able to leak out emails of the senior executives of Sony and several sensitive documents as well. I believe they released 
documents about the salaries of the Sony staff, how much Sony were paying actors and actresses and things like that. Like, it was a huge scandal uh, back then. If you've never heard of this, you can also look it up. It's a very, very, very uh, interesting story. Now, we've also got economic disruption, where you basically attack economic establishments like stock markets, banks, as well as payment systems. Whether or not we will see this in this conflict between Russia and Ukraine remains to be seen. But then, of course, we've got surprise attacks where attacks are designed to surprise the enemy and weaken their defenses. So that's basically the seven types of uh, cyber warfare attacks. Again, let me just give you a quick breakdown. Espionage, sabotage, DOS, electrical power grid attacks, propaganda, economic disruption, and of course, uh, surprise attacks. Now, let's talk about cyber warfare and how it's been used in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Now, we've got this article from The Guardian, and apparently two days ago, Russia actually launched a cyber offensive attack against Ukraine by unleashing a data wiper malware. This article is, of course, from The Guardian, and it says cyber experts have identified a new strain of computer disabling malware unleashed on Ukrainian targets as part of Russia's offensive. Uh, a distributed denial of service attack which paralyzes websites by bombarding them with spurious information requests also hit Ukrainian government sites. So you can see right now that as a prelude to the actual proper invasion, Russia launched uh, cyber attacks against Ukraine. And uh, on Wednesday, ESET Research Labs, a Slovakia-based cybersecurity company, said it had detected a new piece of data wiping malware on hundreds of machines uh, in Ukraine. ESET has called the malware, which renders computers inoperable by disabling rebooting, hermetic wiper. So right there, you can see the cyber attack that Russia launched against uh, Ukraine. This is cyber warfare at its peak. And let me take a look at another article from uh, NBC News which says that Biden has been presented with options for massive cyber attacks against Russia. Now, I do believe that in the updated story, they deny this, but who really knows who is telling the truth, right? The options presented include disrupting the internet across Russia, shutting off power, and stopping trains in their tracks. I'm going to read a few sentences in here. Two U.S. intelligence officials on Wednesday, on, on one Western intelligence official, and another person briefed on the matter say no, fin no final decisions have been made, but they say U.S. intelligence and military cyber warriors are proposing the use of American cyber weapons on a scale never before contemplated. Among the options, disrupting internet connectivity across Russia, shutting off electric power, and tampering with railroad switches. So right there, you can see the different types of cyber warfare attacks. Disrupting the internet, that will be like a DOS attack. Shutting off electric power, that would be electrical power grid attack. And then tampering with railroad switches, that, that of course would be a uh, sabotage. However, uh, there are people who are also against the cyber attacks against Russia. Because right here, let me just say, it says, Officials stress the options being presented to Biden cover a broad range from fairly modest disruptions to drastic ones. U.S. officials anticipate that Russia will retaliate, the sources say, likely with colonial pipeline-style attacks that seek to hurt American consumers. Anything we can do to them, they can do to us. Some experts say the risk of escalation is high. And that's exactly what I have been saying. Before the West or before anyone decides to start launching cyber attacks against Russia, you then need to think of, okay, how would Russia respond back? That's how things escalate. And of course, the final article here is from Venture Beat. And the title here said, Should US launch a cyber attack offensive against Russia? Cyber experts are mixed. And it's pretty much the exact same thing I've been saying before. That yes, even though America has cyber weapons that can target Russian infrastructure, Russia also has its own cyber weapons that can target uh, American infrastructure as well. So there is really... Uh, See, cyber warfare is this arena, it's this kind of warfare that has never really been explored fully before. Yes, we've had cyber warfare attacks here and there, but it's never been on this scale where you've got cyber warfare going hand in hand with actual military warfare. So, in a way, I mean, I don't want to say it's going to be exciting to see because there's nothing exciting about war, but... Depending on what happens, we could see some very, very interesting 
uh, cyber weapons being unleashed and uh, again I'm only hoping and praying that it doesn't get to that level but if it does we might be seeing some very uh, some very very interesting kinds of cyber weapons being used against Russia, also being used against uh, the United States. Only time uh, with hell. But anyway, that's basically my breakdown of what cyber warfare is. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. If you have any comments or questions about anything I've discussed today, please do share them down in the comment section below. I'll do my very best to answer as many of them as I can. My name is Alex. Again, my thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people. Let me just conclude by saying that, please, before you decide to take sides in this war, maybe you're anti-Putin or you're pro-Putin, you're anti-Ukraine, you're pro-Russia, you're pro-West, whatever it is, please do some research first before you pick sides, before you decide to comment on social media and talk about how Russia is right to attack Ukraine or how evil Russia is before you decide to take sides please do some research you've got all the information online you can read about the history of Russia and Ukraine NATO's involvement in the eastern uh in the eastern in eastern Europe and things like that so I'm not asking I'm not here to tell you which side you should pick that's entirely up to you all I'm saying is that please before you decide to choose sides or condemn one country or praise another one do some research because uh, you've got all the information available for you. Do your research and then you can decide on your own. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Cheers.